And we are back with some more Arizona Coyotes franchise mode in FHM 10. And in this one, we have the offseason of year number two after a an unfortunate loss in the playoffs against the Chicago Blackhawks, who we fought back against in game number four there. We went down three nothing, but unfortunately they just proved to be way too much for us. The 62 win Chicago Blackhawks, of course, pulled off the Stanley Cup victory against the New Jersey Devils. So we're heading into this offseason with an interesting situation because we're in a situation where we don't really have too many good prospects, unfortunately, just due to how the draft has been as of late. But at the same time, we really improved last season compared to the season before. Uh, last season, we were 42, 38, and 2. And this past season, we were 51, 28, and 3. And, you know, that was good enough, obviously, to make the playoffs, but not good nowhere near good enough to beat teams like Chicago so we find ourselves in a rather unique situation here and I can only hope that <laughs> the draft will be so kind to give us at least some sort of you know NHL caliber prospect but unfortunately it seems that you only have a solid maybe 20 picks or so 15 20 picks of NHL caliber uh, potentials. So hopefully one of those picks that we traded for, either LA or San Jose, ends up being a lottery pick. I don't think so. Uh, I mean, San actually, San Jose looks like they might be a lottery pick. Yeah, San Jose is a lottery pick. All right, that's good. So we, at least we, ha <laughs> we have some sort of chance at getting into the... Uh, oh, wow. I didn't even notice that. San Jose's 32? Oh, okay. So we actually have a real, we have a real shot at winning the lottery there. <laughs> That that was a steal of a trade. What trade was that? That landed us the San Jose pick. Uh, are we going back to year number one here? Uh, oh, that was the Tanner Lamb trade. <laughs> that was the Tanner Lamb trade. Speaking of Tanner Lamb, I actually want to check in on his uh, on how he's been doing with San Jose so far. Uh, wow. So the entirety of the year that we traded him, 27 points. That was nine points with San Jose. And then this past year, only 10 points in 56 games played. I don't know. I think that might have been the right call here. It's looking like that might have been the right call trading Tanner Lamb, especially if this first round pick right here in 2031 ends up being, you know, top five. So that was uh, <laughs> that was certainly, uh, at least as of right now, looks to be a very good trade. So let's get into the award ceremony. And of course, for the Ted Lindsay, Art Ross, and Maurice Richard, Connor McDavid, no surprise there. Let's see what he did during the regular season. He had 133 points, my goodness, 53 goals, 80 assists. And a Lady Bing Trophy goes to Hendricks LaPierre of Washington. The Bill Masterton goes to Nikita Kucherov of Tampa. The Mark Messier Leadership Award goes to Adam Fox of the Rangers. And the Jennings Trophy goes to Joel Hoffer of St. Louis. And for the Hart Trophy between Connor McDavid, Connor Bedard, and Jack Hughes, it is Connor McDavid, of course. Yet another award to his name. And for the Conn Smythe, it is Artem Levshunov of Chicago with 25 points in 22 games played. For the Calder between Schaefer, Gordon Carroll, Mathis Preston, and Caden Lemire, it is Mathis Preston of San Jose with 60 points in 76 games played. For the Norris Trophy between Artem Levshunov, Luke Hughes, and Kevin Korchinski, it is Artem Levshunov of Chicago with 87 points during the regular season. And for the Selkie Trophy between Nicholas Christensen, Connor Geeky, and Lucas Reichel, it is Lucas Reichel of Chicago. For the Vezna between Connor Ingram, Joel Hoffer, and William LaSalle, come on LaSalle, uh, Connor Ingram with the Vezna Trophy and a 927 save percentage and 7 shutouts. Definitely well deserved. Obviously, would have liked for LaSalle to get the award, but uh, unfortunately, he he did seem to have some steep competition this year in the form of Connor Ingram. Executive of the year between Ryan Johnson, Tom Fitzgerald, and Kyle Davidson. It is Tom Fitzgerald of New Jersey. And for the Jack Adams between Derek Plant, Travis Green, and Andre Torney. Come on, Torney. Uh, Derek Plant. So I I thought it was going to be New Jersey because usually what happens is at least what I notice is that. The whoever win, whichever team wins executive of the year almost always also wins coach of the year, but uh, does not seem to be the case here. And I guess that makes sense considering Chicago's record of 62 wins, right? So, with that being done, I think we can advance through the rest of the offseason here, or uh, not the rest of the offseason, but the uh, you know, until July 1st, because I don't think there's any other guys I want to sign. Darnell Nurse, I was considering signing, but just given his age, I think we're gonna explore our options here but if there's no other options then I'll definitely go back after him he was solid as a seventh defenseman and I think we're gonna be releasing Casper Nassane he hasn't been too impressive in the simulation particularly not last year he had 50 points in year number one for us and he's been pretty physical but 
I just, again, I want to explore our options, you know, and see how we can upgrade. Uh, Oscar Mallgard also, uh, I'm not too high on. We can keep his rights, however, so I might end up trading his rights. And then I guess I'll sign Cohen Cleaver for the AHL, just as a depth signing. But I think that's going to be about it for our re-signings. And now we're on June 23rd, meaning we can sign our prospects again. But unfortunately, once again, no one really to consider for an NHL roster spot. Adam Salmine, I would say, is the closest, but even he is, you know, he's still got a little bit to go. Mental ratings aren't quite there. Uh, offensive ratings are definitely getting better. I would say if he gets his getting open a little bit higher and maybe some, I mean, he's he's close. He's very close. And we have no staff that need to be signed. So I think we could just advance to uh, June 30th here to get our end of the year report. And there it is. So we have reached the playoffs, obviously. We had a winning season and a winning percentage of 600 or better. We met our objective. No negative categories. Longevity bonus of 1 equals the total season score of 25. And a total career score so far of 41. We have 5 available points. I guess I'll just put all of them, once again, into negotiating skill. I like to max that out before anything. Okay, so it looks like we have to replace one of our coaches. Stefan Waite has retired. And I believe, yeah, he was our goalie coach. And we'll be hiring Jordan Sigalet as his replacement. There you go. New goalie coach now assigned. And now let's check out who is in free agency. So you have, as the top goaltender, Dominic DeVicentes. I mean, we, we got goaltending already locked down, so no need to take a look at him, to be honest. There is Yuri Kulik, 27 years of age. Not bad. Nathan Ligari at 30 years of age. Another goaltender, Jesper Wallstadt. Don't need him. Rasmus Kupari at 31 years of age, the center. Uh, Simone Nemetz is in free agency. Good offensive defenseman. Isaac Howard. He's pretty good with that uh, screening, getting open, puck handling, shooting accuracy. He had 61 points last season, too, for Tampa. Then there's Jordan Dumai, 50 points last season. Another good offensive winger. Yeah, it looks like a very deep free agency pool this year. Now it's a matter of what do we want to do here. I mean, we proved last season that we were a, a contending team, right? But my concern is, are, are we going to be able to get, <laughs> you know, enough good prospects if we sign all those veterans in free agency? I mean, we, we lucked out. Honestly, we lucked out with the fact that San Jose has a very high chance of getting the first overall pick. But unfortunately, this is not a draft where there is a particularly <laughs> good prospect as the best potential prospect here is Anthony Appleby, who uh, looks like he's going to be a project, honestly. <laughs> yeah. So honestly, I'm thinking that we just dive into free agency here. Because to be honest, I don't have a whole lot of confidence in the draft right now. <laughs> Especially this late in the save file. We're already technically in year seven, right? Just due to simulating five years prior to taking over the Coyotes. So now that it's all generated players in the draft, it's just, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have a whole lot of confidence in it right now. So I think we might need to take a look at, take a serious look at free agency here. But before we do that, let's take a look at what our roster is currently looking like so we know what to go after in goal obviously you have lasalle and cosa cosa did not do very well last season i'm willing to give him one more chance because he is a three-star ability right but if he drops the ball early on next season then i'm, I'm not going to hesitate trading him to be honest on defense you have bockvist cedar veyu von richter sather zellweger and hurt so that's seven right there and at forward, you have, I believe that's 11 forwards right there. So we're going to need at least a couple of forwards. You have Mitchkov, Keller, Zimmer, Jaeger, Savoy, Stenberg, Beck, He, Walton, Dufour, and Kostuk. I think we've got center locked down pretty well. Jaeger had 73 points last season. So I think he's a, a solid first line center. I wouldn't say he's an ideal first line center, that being said. Like, I, I would like to upgrade if possible. But he seems like he's trending in the right direction based off what he did last season then he had Stenberg with 37 points and Beck with 50 points and Beck seems like he's going to be a consistent 50 point guy so I think we can rely at least for right now on Beck and Jaeger being our one-two punch at center as for wingers you have Mitchkov with 54 points last season 69 for Keller uh, 44 for Zimmer 28 for Savoy 51 for Kevin He he was a good pickup off waivers 39 for Walton Seven for Dufour, 24 for Kostuk. I mean, obviously we could use that star forward, right? But it doesn't seem like we're going to get that out of this free agency. And it doesn't seem like we're going to get that out of the draft either. So, 
you know, it's it's a bit of a rough spot that we're in currently as far as acquiring star talent. So we're just gonna have to make the best of what we have here. I'm seriously considering a trade for Jagger Furcus here. He's on the trade block for the Seattle Kraken and we can get it done by trading Carter Kostuk, two and a half star ability, the rights to Oscar Malgard. I wasn't planning on signing him anyway, right? Cause he only had 17 points last year. Wasn't very good overall. And then two first round picks, our own and LA's. So non-lottery picks in exchange for Jagger Furcus, who is a four star ability and is a proven minimum 30 goal scorer. And that's something we could really use. And I'm honestly not seeing much in free agency in terms of proven goal scorers like that because if we take a look at forwards i mean you got kulik you got howard but even howard's not as impressive kulik never hit 30 goals in his career before right then you got kupari who seems like he rarely ever scores 20 yeah in fact he's never scored even 20 goals you got dumai you got lundell nasayan of course was pretty good in our year number one but none of those guys even come close to how impressive uh, Jagger Furcus is not only statistically but also with his attributes no other player in free agency comes close to this so I'm seriously considering doing this trade especially since the draft is so weak this year right like we we keep San Jose's pick and then we just trade our non-lottery picks along with a player who I wasn't going to sign anyway plus a fourth liner in Kostuk yeah I mean that's yeah I like that a lot I think I might do that. He's on a two-year deal as well, so it's not like, you know, this is only a one-year deal kind of trade. This is not a rental player. I mean, it seems like you're guaranteed 30 goals minimum out of Furcus, right? Gets mid-60s grades consistently. Yeah, I like this a lot. And he's even managed to score 46 the year before we entered the league. Yeah, we're doing this. I, I think we have to do this. So it'd be Carter Kostuk, the rights to Malgard, our first for this year, and LA's first. For Jagger Furcus, let me think this over one more time. Do I really want to do this? I, I think so. Yeah, again, I wasn't going to sign Malgard regardless. Kostuk could be easily replaced. Actually, how was he physically last year? 74 hits? Yeah, he's easily replaced. Our first is probably going to be inconsequential, just given that we made it to the second round this year. And as we've seen by the quality of this year's draft, at that point, I don't think there's going to be anyone worth taking anyway. At least no no one that's going to be ready anytime soon, right? And then LA was also in the playoffs. I forget exactly where they were knocked out. Yeah, I think I'm going to do this. That's too good. And since that San Jose first rounder is definitely going to be very good, I honestly don't have a problem giving up these two firsts for Jagger Furcus if he's going to be what he was for Seattle for us, right? Yeah, I'm doing this. Offer trade. Let's see what they say. That being said, we are going to need a couple of forwards still out of free agency. So let's just look for some physical forwards who can slot in on the fourth line there. Uh, are we going to need a center? Yeah, we're going to need a center. I mean, Kupari would be amazing for a third line center role, but the issue is how much does he want as far as salary? Probably a lot. Oh, really? 1.9 for one year? That's a steal. That is absolutely a steal for Rasmus Kupari. I will do that right away. In fact, I'll give him a little bit more. 2.25 just to make sure he <laughs> accepts because that is... That's very good for Rasmus Kapari. I was not expecting that. I mean, he's a solid three and a half star ability. And he had 37 points last year for Atlanta, 49 the year before. Like he's he's a consistent 40 point getter. And he was only asking for that much. Like, yes, I will absolutely do that <laughs> any day of the week. So if we can get Kupari to lock down that third line center, then I, I think that would be a solid center core alongside of Stenberg, Beck, and Jaeger. Or you know what, even or you know what, I might even have Kupari just lock down fourth line center because Stenberg isn't really fit to be on the bottom six, I don't think. He'd be better fit in the top six. Jaeger's definitely our first line center. But then again, Beck is also more so suited to the top six. But then again, out of these three, out of Jaeger, Stenberg, and Beck, I would say Beck is the best one defensively or maybe he's equal with Jaeger I don't know <laughs> but I all I know is that I don't want Jaeger on the third line right so I think you go if it were me coaching I would go Jaeger Stenberg Beck and then Kupari as the fourth line center that that could be very good unfortunately the lines aren't up to me they're up to Mr. Torney there but hopefully he sees reason and has that same idea uh maybe Matthew Nyes I mean he is from Phoenix he's from Arizona so this would be uh I guess a homecoming for him if we got him on board he's pretty solid all around in terms of his ratings what about his stats uh, nothing too impressive especially as of late he's more of an AHL player it looks like and he could be a good depth player but I don't know about uh, that price I think I want to give a chance to Hutch Rose he's never played an NHL game before but 
He was pretty physical. He had 125 hits last year in the AHL. Got a pretty good personality. He's a little prone to controversy, unfortunately, but I think I still want to give him a chance. Seems like he'd be a decent fourth liner, if nothing else. But even better than that, he's very cheap. Less than a million dollars for one year. I will definitely do that. See if we can get him on board. So we have offers for Kupari and Rose, and then we're looking to acquire Mr. Jagger Furcus from Seattle. Do I want to make any improvements on defense? I think Zellweger's got to stay. He did very well in his short time with us last year after that trade from Florida. Von Richter we acquired in the Bastion trade, I believe. Wasn't too impressed with him last year. I think I do want to give him another look, though, because he is pretty cheap. Rhett Sather, still pretty young. Uh, unfortunately, didn't have much of a chance last year. I believe due to a major injury so he, he hasn't really gotten the chance to really prove himself yet so i at least want to give him you know a good <laughs> full season at least to really see what he's about then yeah, of course you have Veyu, cedar and bockfist all pretty solid veterans there on the blue line for us so i don't think there's really a urge to get anyone on defense but let's just take a look anyway i mean there's shea theodore there's david reinbacher noah hannafin hudson thornton there's nikki shin there's nurse devon taves I mean, Houston Hurt made a solid seventh defenseman last year, too. So I wouldn't mind just holding on to him. I mean, we just signed him to a contract extension after all. So, yeah, I don't think there's much to be done here in free agency as far as defensemen go. Like, there's no one who's really jumping out at me. So I think we could advance here and see what happens. Okay, so it looks like Hutch Rose wants us to give him a bit more. I'll go up to the most that I could possibly go at 925000 for one year. And there you go. The Seattle Kraken have accepted our offer of Carter Kostuk, two firsts, and the rights to Oscar Malgard in exchange for Jagger Furcus. Yeah, I'm doing this deal. Like, that's that's way too good. Jagger Furcus is a very good player, especially with those physical and mental ratings, combined with the offensive ratings, getting open at 19. Yeah, I like Jagger Furcus a lot. Complete trade, there it is. Major trade for your Arizona Coyotes and the Seattle Kraken sends Jagger Furcus to the Arizona Coyotes, and that is our top six locked up. And then once we get Kupari and uh, Rose signed, then I think we'll be good to go forward-wise. And with that, we're now on the draft lottery, and yep, we have, the <laughs> we have a really good chance of getting that first overall pick. So let's go through it. At number 18, you have Detroit, followed up by Utah, Calgary, Colorado, Boston, Washington, Dallas, Vegas, Florida, Winnipeg, so Seattle moves up, the Islanders, Toronto, Pittsburgh, Columbus, <gasps> oh, we won the lottery, <laughs> Carolina is at four, meaning we are in the top three, Nashville is at number three, and who wins it? It will be the Seattle Kraken and your Arizona Coyotes get number two, okay, I mean, it, I'm not too crushed about that, just considering the... <laughs> <laughs> the quality of this year's draft but that i will certainly take that that is very good to see for your arizona coyotes and with that i think it is time to start the draft i don't see any point in trying to trade for the first overall pick so we may as well just see what happens here who will seattle take they will take anthony appleby the top potential prospect so i suppose that does make sense Although he was right, he was ranked at 37. So I commend the computer for actually taking the best potential with the first overall pick. But the question is, are there any? <laughs> There's not really any second overall worthy players here as far as what's typically considered a second overall pick. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad. I'm really glad that I traded those two picks for Jagger Furcus because this is just this is honestly kind of ew like what 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 are these prospects <laughs> like especially this guy justin harding where's he ranked I'm just out of curiosity 45 are you kidding me he's a second round pick <laughs> this oh man this is brutal uh i'm thinking i mean it's gotta be either foster beardle gabriel deshenay daryl blalock raymond armstrong or possibly maxim mergaleev I think that's about it. I mean, we already have Antison and Salminen for defensive prospects. So I'm thinking we go with Armstrong here being the center. Either Armstrong or Mugaleev. But Armstrong has the better potential and the better ability currently. So yeah, I think we go Armstrong. What about his personality? I mean, it's not the best personality, but I'll certainly take it. If it means getting a somewhat talented player out of this draft. 82 points last year in the USHL. 67 grade. Projected to be pick 58, but but at this point, I'm not concerned about that. I'm just concerned about getting the best player possible for what I believe to be the best player. And I think Raymond Armstrong definitely fits that description. I mean, you could also make the case for Foster Beardle. 
I mean, it's really just between Armstrong and, and Beardle for me at this point. I mean, Beardle was projected to be going number one. 48 points last year as a defenseman, 72 grade in the OJHL. I don't know. I'm just not a big fan of his mental ratings. But then again, Armstrong's aren't much better. <laughs> so it's it really just comes down to positional preference, I think. I mean, it doesn't seem like there's much point in comparing them because obviously not only are the different positions, but they seem to have relatively similar ratings across the board. And once again, just considering that we already have Antisen and Salminen as defensive prospects, yeah, I think we go with Armstrong here. Welcome to the Arizona Coyotes, Raymond Armstrong. There it is. So it, it'll be interesting to see where uh, Beardle goes to now, considering he was ranked at number one. So let's simulate a few picks here to see if he goes. There's Deshane going at number three to Nashville. Marshall Hollock going to Carolina at number four. And Beardle goes number five to Columbus. Okay. But I am satisfied with my pick of Raymond Armstrong. So we'll pick until human. And honestly, I think we'll just skip through the rest of the draft. Yeah, we're, we're yeah. <laughs> this is kind of sad. Let's just, yeah, CPU finished draft. All right, so the draft has concluded. Let's see if we've gotten Kupari and Rose. It appears we have. Yes, indeed. They have both signed on with your Arizona Coyotes. And I think we are just about ready to head into year number three here. Let's just take one more look at our roster just to make sure we're not missing anything. Two goaltenders, seven defensemen. And at forward, I believe that is 13. Yes, indeed, that is 13 forwards. I think we have just about everything covered. Oh, right. We have... I completely forgot. How did I completely forget about these guys? Etienne Moran and Victor Fedorov still on the injury list with their major injuries. So, yeah, we're good. <laughs> we're good. I, I, I'm I, sorry about that, guys. I, I didn't realize. <laughs> I, I completely forgot. So, we're actually at 24 players. And actually, that puts us at 83.2 million in salary. So, we are brushing up against the salary cap ceiling now. Yeah, okay, we're good. <laughs> we're definitely we are more than prepared to go into this upcoming season wow i, fe I feel so I i'm so sorry about that Fedorov. I'm, I'm sorry about that moran i completely forgot about you guys <laughs> all right so with that i think we can now go into the start of year number three and being inducted into the hockey hall of fame are alex ovechkin so ovi gets in with that 938 goals so he surpassed gretzky nicholas backstrom as well so ovi and backstrom get in on the same year blake wheeler and sergey Bobrovsky are your hall of fame inductions for this year oh my goodness we actually have a good draft we actually have a good draft in terms of potential guys it's incredible it's it's an absolute miracle <laughs> Maxim Turcotte, the top potential guy with that four and a half star potential. Then you got four four star potentials in Boyle, Glasser, Clermont, and Whitford. A couple of three and a half star potentials in Erickson and May. A lot of three star potentials. I like what I see finally out of <laughs> out of this draft. This is a finally a decent draft as far as what potentials should be looking like. I mean, obviously their current abilities leave a little bit to be desired still, but it's it's some progress at least so that's that's good to see good to see maybe we should consider trading for another first round pick this year but nonetheless the preseason is over uh, etienne moran is pretty close to coming back from his major injury he's currently day-to-day -day, but this is our roster heading into year number three in goal you have lasalle and cosa on defense you have bachvist veyu sailor cedar von richter zellweger and hurt i forward you have Furkus, keller jaeger kupari mitchkov zimmer he, Walton, Fedorov, Stenberg, Beck, Savoie, Dufour, and Rose. And with that, I think we'll end things off here. So in the next one, we will get started with year number three with your Arizona Coyotes.